Two men journey to the bars and restaurants of Scandinavia to find amazing beers, always with the same question. Hey, what's on tap? It's time to find out. The penultimate day of our Halloween calendar has finally arrived. On the penultimate day of Christmas, my true love sent to me. <laughs> As we all know, Christmas is the 25th, not the 24th. But here in Sweden, it's the 24th. Uh, so I will say that it is one thing I do love about Sweden, is you do celebrate everything the day before. The eve. The of eve of. Christmas Eve. Midsummer right, Eve. Right. So you can really take the day after and just nurse that hangover. Yeah. And then just really just relax and, and kind of lean into it. Around Where, Easter, there's a lot of eves as well. Yeah, yeah. And so like in the U.S., it's like, oh, it's the 4th of July. So everyone oh, just... Oh, uh, 4th of July Eve. Yeah, yeah. So no, <laughs> so no one celebrates on the... Everyone has a 4th off. No one celebrates on the third. They celebrate the day of. And then on the fifth, everyone goes back to work and everyone feels like shit. Yeah. The only time you really get a real reprieve on the holidays is Thanksgiving. Thanksgiving is always a fixed date. Right. And you always have the Friday after off, which is where Black Friday comes from. Because you have the Friday off, so that's when the, like we're kicking in the Christmas sales, like midnight Thanksgiving, and we're just going to rock it through till, till the end of the year. Um, but like Christmas floats, Christmas isn't a fixed, I mean, it's a fixed day, but the day is always changing. So some and days, the day it is fixed, right. which means that the day will float. Exactly. So it's, it's really one of the few, so Thanksgiving in America is really one of the few days where you can really just, you know, get crazy. And then the next day you can just take the day off and not do anything if you need to. Uh, otherwise, it's always a work day, basically, the day after. Um, but Sweden has so many really... For a pure, almost atheistic country, like, we have the most um, religious holidays of any place. It is insane. Yeah. I had to look up some of the some of the religious holidays. I'm like, I don't even know what this is. <laughs> I grew up in the church and I don't know what this is. <laughs> I don't know if what I'm about to say is a reason for it, but um, a detail in the history is that... Uh, so I did a lot of genealogy, mm -hmm. my family research. And that means going through uh, church books, mm -hmm. finding out when, when people are born, etc. Oh, did you find that you were really Irish? Uh, I, I they immigrated that. 200 years ago and uh, no one ever... <laughs> no, but I, I am a Prussian. Prussian, oh really, okay. I have Prussian heritage from the town of Hildesheim, outside of Hannover. Exactly, and yeah. everyone knows where that is. Yes, uh, but uh, in those old church books from like the 1600s and 1700s, there are no dates. It's all the fourth Sunday after Ascension Day. The, four, the fifth Sunday after Easter, whatever. Mm -hmm. And knowing that, it's easy to look at the calendar digitally and just piece it together. But exactly. That, that's how they, the, 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 this two Sundays before whatever. Everything so, was anchored on these holidays. But yeah, but all of the Lutheran or Catholic holidays are really winter spring focused yes how, how do they manage through like july august or like there are 13 so, weeks after <laughs> there are a lot of uh, uh, church holidays all through the year yeah i guess but, so. but some when you get to like june it'll be the seventh sunday after yeah and i am certain that farmers in the 1600s had no idea what date it was no, no, because it was based off of uh, crops. So yes. they, they probably had another way of doing this. Right. Like, all right, so we plant, and then we know in eight weeks that the crops will be ready to harvest. Yeah. And like if that. they ever forgot what week it was, they would go to church, and they would know it is now three weeks until this like, like important thing. Yeah. And you would know that that that. Palm Sunday. I don't even know when Palm Sunday occurs, but it is a very specific holiday. Yeah, yeah, but do you know what Palm Sunday is? No. Palm Sunday is the Sunday where it's... Uh, oh, is that when he was uh, nailed? No. It's not named Palm Sunday because Jesus is crucified. That's... Um, uh, it's not... It's Good Friday. 
Right. Because Easter is the well, day so he rides. So what is Palm Sunday? Palm Sunday is when Jesus rides into Nazareth on the back of a donkey and they lay down palms. Oh. Uh, palm fronds. Right. Uh, on the, to cover the path. Right. Uh, I think it's actually, and then preceded by Ash Wednesday, uh, which is where the Catholics get the ashes on the forehead. Cool. Uh, but I'm a little sketchy on that. So if I'm incorrect, um, it's been a long time since I've had to follow these dogmatic uh, tropes. Cool. Um, but speaking of uh, dogmatic tropes, let's I, jump into this beer. I brought a beer. Yeah. Oh, it looks like a nerd. No, it's not a nerd break. That is so funny. Uh, did you think about bringing Lervig Paragon 2018? I did not think about bringing Lervig Paragon 2018. Um, but I'm super excited about this. This is 13.5% uh, barley wine. Um, bu 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 aged in bourbon barrels for 12 months. Oh, yeah. That's all it says. So we've had we've had many of the Lervig um, Paragon beers in the past yes. privately. Uh, the most most recent was noted for its viscous um, issues. There, there, there was, was a, one uh, vintage where <laughs> it, it almost came out as like threads. Yeah, it was it was. Pulled from release yes. and discontinued by the brewery because there was a uh, a malfunction in the in the production of the beer. Yes. And uh, I actually I actually had gone to Copenhagen and picked up a bottle on a whim, and then everyone else's orders had been canceled through yes. system log. So I was the only one that had a, and it was it didn't taste bad. It tasted no. pretty good. But the texture was terrible, disturbing. Yeah. It's not often you can describe a beer as a disturbing texture because it was, it was not right. I mean, it was, it was unsettling. <laughs> yes, but this is not that uh, vintage. No. It definitely looks like a barley wine, right? Yeah, yeah, it looks yeah. perfectly like a barley wine. It looks great. It smells like a barley wine. You get the caramel notes. You get the kind of dryness to it. I mean, it smells like, um, like a, just a slightly aged barley wine. I'm, yeah, got, got no complaints here. So what happened was I, I found out that I had bought two bottles and then only drank other people's bottles. So I, I ah. owned two <laughs> bottles and I drank one of them earlier this year and it was bomb. So I figured nice. I will save this one. I will drink it with Stefan. Mm. It, it smells like uh, bourbon, lane, bourbon barrel aged barley wine. Yeah, sure. it smells like straight up, like just exactly what you want. The bottle I had like six months ago did not taste dusty, and I would be surprised if it turned dusty. Yeah, in six months. And that's little exactly. Time. Yeah, I would do. Like, cheers. Cheers. Um, it's a little on the cold side, ironically. Um, I brought it to Stefan's. Completely 100% room temperature. Yeah. So you put it in the freezer, thinking, oh, it'll only be there for a very short while. It is actually a little bit cold. Yeah, it is a little bit cold. It's like for it's in there. My freezer works really well. It's like 20 minutes, and I'm like, well, it's pretty cold. <laughs> but the aftertaste right now mm -hmm. is pure caramel mm -hmm. with bourbon barrel aged caramel flavors. Yeah, it's like um, brown sugar caramel flavors. Yeah. With um, just a nice boozy um, barrel aging to it. This is really, really nice. And it's 13.5% yeah. ABV. Yeah. It, it drinks really easy. Like yeah. a lot of times for me, barley wines can be a little a little much, especially when the ABV is, it gets a little higher. But I think this uh, drinks really clean, really not too sweet, just on the edge of sweetness, um, but a lot of fun. Yeah. Uh, I... In my brain, I kind of categorize the Lervig Paragon together with Nug uh, uh, Dark Horizons. Mm -hmm. Because yeah. they kind of come, they always come out at basically the same time. They all always have this heavy barrel flavor, uh, which is a lot of fun. It, they're always good, except for that one year when they. <laughs> except you know, for the one year where they just had a. Like, like where the brewery comes out and apologizes for. Yeah. For messing up things so And the possibly. apology that year contained the words, 
the beer has turned, it has slimy ropiness. And they were not wrong. And no one wants slimy ropiness. You know, it's like, like when someone says slimy ropiness in a beer, you're just like, how do you even do that? Like that, that's almost its own skill set. Exactly. <laughs> but it was kind of protein strands. Yeah, yeah. Kind there, of was, disgusting. there was something in the, the later brewing stages that really threw it off. Um, but this beer, look, it looks pretty good. Um, it is yep. thick brown, non-see-through. Um, but it's distinct from an imperial style. Sometimes barley wines can be really black. Mm -hmm. You go, wait, haven't you missed the mark? And sometimes imperial stouts can be really light brown. Mm -hmm. You go, you didn't add enough roasted malts to this. Yeah. So this is what I want a thick, heavy barley wine uh, to, yeah. to look like. I think it's great. I, I think this is an absolute killer beer. Um, Paragon never, except for the one, and even the <laughs> one year when it was like really it, funky, it still tasted amazing. Flavor wise, it yeah. was surprisingly <laughs> good. Yeah, um, and so it never disappoints. It's always tasty, and I love the artwork. I follow the artist on uh, Instagram, nice, and they do really, really great uh, Instagram posts with all of their crazy, um, crazy and things. This one has this like silver mirror like mm -hmm. texture where I can see myself. That's pretty crazy. Um, so what, what do you give this one? <sighs> I, I have not yet decided. It is definitely a 4.5, mm -hmm. but it might it might go, it might be rounded up to 475 as it gets a little bit warmer. Yeah, I'm kind of like cupping it in my hands, trying to warm it up uh, and kind of agitating it to kind of get a little heat dissipation, yeah. you know, a little uh, temperature exchange going on there. Your freezer um, actually, it, it, worked, it, it worked really well. Yeah, I know. Much, like sometimes it's better than I wanted it to. But I'm really happy. Mm -hmm. I don't remember what it cost. It's a, such a long time ago. But it's some somewhere in the region of twenty four dollars. Yeah, they're not cheap. No. And this this is only a um, a three thirty bottle. Yeah, so it's not huge. Um, but yeah, it's never it's never cheap. But I think it's always it's one of the few annual releases that really is kind of worth it. Yeah, um, because you're not going to be disappointed. When I found those two bottles earlier this year, I was like, oh no. Uh, these these have gone dusty. 2018, it's now 2022. What a shame. So I just opened one on a whim. Mm -hmm. We were just two people, like now, uh, drinking it. And like, hmm, this really works. This hasn't it does. gone dusty. It does. No, not at all. I mean, it, I think it hasn't even gone wintergreen. No. I get zero, because that's the problem with barley wines. When barley wines age out, they get this yeah. minty wintergreen kind of odd flavor to them. I don't know what about barley wines makes them do that, but this is a thing that they do. And uh, this does not even approach it. This probably could go another couple of years even. Probably um, could. Because they do a wax seal on it. It keeps it really airtight. Uh, I think that's what's preserving and keeping it really fresh. Um, this is our only um, aged beer on the podcast this year, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, I, I specifically avoided aged beers because... Uh, They've been kind of his hit or miss mm -hmm. uh, previous calendars. Uh, I have brought a few that were bangers. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. a few that were just like, oh no, it's gone too old. That's yeah. so sad. <laughs> but no, this is this is really really great. I'm with you right at four four point five. I think it's it, like if you hadn't told me twenty eighteen, I mean it could have been this year. Honestly, right. It's it's really really good. And I would not have brought this if I hadn't tried the same vintage this year. Yeah. Not dusty, that, yeah. because I, I want to avoid that. I mean, I, I'll keep bringing those dusty beers for us to drink outside of the podcast, mm -hmm. just to get rid of them. Yeah, but not for the not, now. The the Christmas calendar has turned a little bit. Uh, it's very special to me. Yeah, but almost a little bit spiritual. We need oh. to like we need to we need to crush this. Yeah, I, we got one day left, and I think we're gonna go out. On a high note, I think I think the average of all the beers are is somewhere around four point two, four point three. Yeah, yeah. We take we take an uh, an average of the whole calendar. It's it's probably in the I would say probably four point two overall. Four point two, yeah, yeah. Uh, a lot of four two fives, some four fives, some fours, and one three seventy five. Yep, that's the that's a, that's a pretty amazing calendar right that's there. That's an amazing I calendar. Well, not argue with that in any way whatsoever. Uh, so until tomorrow, our last day.
We will uh, we'll sign off for now. Till next time. Keep drinking, you dum dums. <laughs>